A rebrand is not simply choosing a new colour scheme for your company logo, but a rebrand is enhancing and updating the entire business. Day 1769 in the Big Brother house. Sorry, it's still day God knows what in lockdown. But the more thi these are more things that I've now learned in lockdown. My dog, Penfold, loves the hose pipe and getting absolutely soaking wet. Simon Sinek is an absolute bloody legend. If you haven't caught his book club on YouTube, please go and check it out. Absolutely amazing fellow with great thoughts and ideas that probably seem more relevant now than ever. And I also should have bought some shares in Zoom about two months ago, and that surely there is no coincidence between us being in lockdown and the weather being so bloody gorgeous. But for weeks and weeks, I have been suggesting to people that this is the best time to reflect refresh, rebrand, and relaunch your business. Yes, your business, that one that you are so worried about right now, your pride and joy, that thing that is paying your wages. So in this, the third of four podcasts looking at reflect, refresh, rebrand, and relaunch, this makes today's, yes, you guessed it, how to rebrand your business starting today, and I mean today. So hit the stingy thing. Now, over time, you may notice that your company brand is getting a little dated, your profits and interest from potential customers is going down, and you can't seem to understand why. Now, if this sounds like your business, then it may be time for a bit of a rebrand. Now, a rebrand doesn't mean starting from scratch, throwing away all of your current resources, which you have put time and effort into, or throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's simply giving your business a new lease of life and in turn, improving customer opinions of your brand. So what is a rebrand? Well, now before you choose to undergo, undergo a company rebrand, you must first understand what a rebrand actually is. A rebrand is not simply choosing a new color scheme for your company logo, but a rebrand is enhancing and updating the entire business. If your business is starting to look, feel, and communicate in a bit of a dated way, then a rebrand may be exactly, exactly what you need right now. Now, for a successful rebrand, your main goal should be to improve the way your business is perceived to clients, as well as your employees and your potential customers. Rebranding is actually relatively a long process, but the more time and effort which you put into it will ensure that you are gonna receive the maximum benefit. Now, there are many benefits from rebranding your company, including increasing your visibility and giving your new and existing customers the confidence that you are at the top of your game and that you know the market, which improves your sales, educates your employees and your customers of who you are, your objectives and your goals for the future. Now, the key things to remember throughout the entire process is that your rebranding needs to be consistently reviewed to ensure that your new company identity is enforced throughout all of your marketing campaigns. Now, any business can rebrand, but to be successful in your venture, you must first be organized and be patient. And actually, this could take quite a long time. So here's my six step guide to successfully rebranding your business. Number one, create a new identity. Now, creating a new identity is much more than creating a new logo or choosing a new color palette. Yes, that is part of the rebranding process. But first, you must focus on the bigger picture. The big picture being your company as a whole. Sit yourself down with a pen and paper and answer, it, answer please answer these following questions about your business. Who are you? Who aren't you? Who are your main competitors? Who are your customer? The age, the gender, the interest, the careers. How do your customers interact with you on social media? That's if you're present on there at all. What social media platforms do or don't they use? How do you perceive your business at the moment? What works and what doesn't work? And this may also be a very good question to ask your employees. Now, once you've answered those questions, it will give you a kind of overview where your current business is and where you should be improving. By identifying your customers' needs and how they interact through online marketing, will actually give you an insight to how successfully target them and inform them of your rebrand later on in the process. But from this data, you can begin your rebrand. Your brand is your company's identity, so don't expect the task to take like 10 minutes to complete. 
To begin your company rebranding, you need to ask yourself another set of questions. This time, to understand how you can rebrand your business successfully and what needs to be done. So here's a few questions to begin with. However, feel free to kind of extend and add more to the list. Where do you want your company to position itself in the market? Why is it lacking now? How can you become more responsive and interactive with your customers? What do you want your customers to think, to feel and expect when they see your company brand? Number two, ask your customers. Now your customer should be the number one focus when it comes to any type of rebranding. How your customer perceives you is the key to success. Obviously you can't email them all asking for color suggestions or help because that would for one be unprofessional and two lead them to believe that you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. But a simple way to include your customer is to create a teaser campaign for your rebranding and share it on multiple social media platforms. Now a teaser campaign will allow you to give your rebranding a bit of a trial run. Creating polls or ask customers to vote if they have a few options, which, whichever ones they like. Customers love to feel involved and to kind of interact with brands and businesses. Giving them the opportunity to add their input about your company will create interest and make them feel involved and valued. Polls are easy to create via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or if you have a template of, of your rebrand, then, set, then share, actually share a screenshot and ask for their opinions. Number three, fix problems. Now take some time and see what's working. By this time, you kind of should have accumulated some strong customer feedback. See what their thoughts were when it came to your teaser campaign, how they commented, reacted and interacted with your posts and tailor your rebranding around them. Customer feedback is invaluable when it comes to rebranding because they will tell you whether they like something or not. And if you ignore their advice, then this can lead to a lack of trust in future business. So take the time to read through the comments and really understand their thoughts and concerns towards your rebrand. Fixing problems is more than fixing the visual aspect, but also having the product work is important. For example, if you are rebranding and one part of that is creating or updating your website, then you must ensure that all links are working correctly, image links are not broken, and that each page loads correctly. Having, you've got to go and have a look at your site alone and also get all of your team involved. Put your brand under the microscope because you'll want to fix any problems before it goes live to the public. So make sure all your aspects of your business are updated along with your rebrand as you don't want to have any outdated or forgotten about areas. If your new color scheme is blue and green, make sure those pink logos are long gone before you go live. He says going to sort his own website out. Number four, keep your team up to date. Rebranding can take a lot of time and a lot of changes to get it right. You'll be well aware of all the changes that you're making but if the rest of your team are working across multiple projects as well as the rebranding project, then they need to be kept up to date with anything and everything, regardless of whether it's minor or a major change. Schedule weekly meetings to show the team where you are with that particular project. These meetings also give you the chance to ask for their opinions. A fresh perspective is always needed when it comes to a big project such as any type of rebranding. Now inform the team of your new brand identity and what it represents. This kind of may seem obvious, but it's very important, especially if any members of your team are creating blog posts for your company. Your company should have one voice because you are essentially one brand that doesn't mean to exclude your personality when writing, but ensure that all your posts have one tone that will link it back to your company brand nicely and keep the branding really strong. Number five, keep promoting. Now there is no point in taking all of this time to rebrand and then forgetting to promote it. The whole point of rebranding is to give your brand a new lease of life. And if you're not keeping your customers updated, then you're not getting any kind of interest. Create a social media calendar for your rebrand. This allows you to regularly share announcements, images, posts, and teasers, keeping your customers engaged and in the loop of what's going on 
behind the scenes. Creating a social media calendar is kind of also a great way to keep you organized and ensuring that your posts are pretty damn regular. Sharing teasers on social media platforms and in your company newsletters is an easy to create enthusiasm and to remind your customers and clients that something big is happening soon. Use a hashtag to create a bit of excitement, like um, hashtag creative business coach or whatever. Top tip, but when you're choosing your hashtag, make sure nobody else is using that hashtag, especially your competition. Number six, never look back. Now, once you've rebranded, avoid moving backwards into old habits. To successfully rebrand, you must keep your brand alive. There is no point wasting time rebranding, then a couple of weeks later, go back to your old brand. This will leave your customers confused and likely agitated. Why would they choose to buy from or even use a company who doesn't even like or know who they are? See, rebranding is a big step and one that should be carefully considered, critiqued and analysed all the way through. Now, with the right amount of organisation, enthusiasm and determination, your company will be on the road to rebrand success. And that is it for this episode of your Best Kept Business Secret podcast. I hope you've got something from it and you can also hopefully get something out of the brand new small business magazine aptly called Your Best Kept Business Secret magazine. Available to download for free right now to your computer, your laptop, your tablet or your smartphone. It's interactive with practical and I mean practical steps to help you get the business that your hard work deserves. Follow the link in the show notes or below and get your copy today. And we thank them for their sponsorship of this podcast. And more excitingly, there will be an official website going live in the next few weeks for the magazine. So don't forget to love, like and subscribe and I will see you on the other side. I am Mark Ford. I'm quite possibly your best kept business secret. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Goodbye.